<laughs> in front of the rhinoceroses. Rhinoceroses. Would you do my guys a lot of you? Rhinoceroses. Oh. Uh, in the hand. Hey, you made it. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're great. So we're going to set it up to go live. Uh, you know, Diane, Diane's going to join us also. She's my co-host. I'm kind of vibing having her be my co-host because I think it opens us up to more women. Yes. Even yes, though you're on. So if we want her to go, uh, just text me. Have Diane leave. Oh, that's that's <laughs> Keep her on. It'll be fun. Or something. <laughs> Move Text her out. It will have her leave. <laughs> no, um, let her stay. She loves tech, so we'll have a good time. I'm doing it on my personal page. <laughs> and you can do it from my person into my other one, will you? Gotcha. Okay. And you can. It's not too bad. The I think this this cancels the noise. No, it's for the fine. most part, too. Cool. This is the quietest space I could find by the Starbucks, believe it or not. Okay. I'm going to blur out the Starbucks in the background. Oh, do you no, want me to? Okay. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Starbucks. <laughs> oh, you're not? I'm yeah. sorry. I can go by the slot machines over there. Hey, we're going live. It's loading okay. up. Setting up your meeting. What's up? Hey, will you tag her when you share it? Say that we're on with her. Is that all right, Danielle? We're going to tag you? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. Hey, this is Jace, and welcome to Speakeasy with Jace. I am super excited to have our special guest. Uh, but before that, we are joined by Diane's torso. Diane's <laughs> 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 torso. Hey, no, this is wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, guys. My co-host, Diane Mooney, who is, um, what's your title now? Coordination specialist. Coordination specialist and cat wrangler. Um, and then also we're joined in the background by my new piece of art, the buffalo, or I don't know, I mean a rhinoceros. A rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> and then super excited to bring in our guest, who is just one of the just real sweet giver, probably an over giver, because she spends too much time with people <laughs> that aren't her family. But she's like this awesome human being, and she has an expertise. You guys, I know how to do great events. I know how to crush sales at events. I know how to craft an event that is life-changing. I am not an expert on filling events, and it has been like a godsend to meet her. She is the expert on filling events, developing your tribe, and like getting people there so you can make a lot of money and help them. Please welcome to the Zoom, Danielle Clark. <laughs> can, can Thank I you guys. In there or just the the Fitz? Do you mean the Fitzpatrick? Fitzpatrick, or Fitzpatrick <laughs> Everyone likes to put in Fitzgerald. I think I might have had the wrong maiden name growing up. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so my apologies, guys. Gonna, the elephant in the room is that I'm at the airport right now on transit to the California coast, and. Uh, Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. <laughs> I hear you. Can you hear us okay? Because I'm just on the computer speaker instead of headphones. It's yeah, I can hear you guys great. Cool. So um, where are you headed and what are you heading to do? Let's start with that because I think that's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm heading to San Diego. And um, that is because I am running an event in San Diego October 18th and 20th. So we're doing some, some pre-marketing. For the event, we're going to some events, meeting some new people, you know, building up the relationships that we have in San Diego so that we can get some locals, some local San Diego, how do you say San Diegans? Or I don't even know what that, I should ask before I say it. <laughs> uh, if anyone knows, please put it in the comments. Um, just, you know, we're streaming from Zoom, Danielle, so, um, and, and anyone watching, so that's why Diane's kind of looking over there and then I'll be clicking around. So when I'm streaming from Zoom, 
I don't immediately see the comments. We have to look on Facebook to see those. I only see Zoom. So if there's a delay in us answering a question or replying, that's why. But well, Danielle, tell us more about these pop-up events, what you're doing and uh, what that's about. Yeah, so there's a lot of ways to do the pop-up events. Um, what I like to do is I like to build my tribe online and then I set up some pop-up events to meet them in person. And it's really great when you do it that way because they get so excited and they, you know, they get on the phone or Zoom with you, but they still don't get to actually meet you. So when you have um, the tribe online and you say, okay, let's meet in person, I'm coming to your city, they get really excited and just like, they'll, they'll show up more. They're more likely to show up because there's not so many opportunities for me to come out to San Diego since I'm on the East Coast. So um, it's just a wonderful way of, you know, you get to develop the relationship online, but then bring it, on, bring it in on person. And, and I think that's one of the things that's missing with the online space is that, you know, there's that personal touch that you can't really fulfill unless you get, you know, handshake and eye contact, like from face to face. So, so what are you going to do at this pop-up event? I'm just going to, I'm just going to meet these guys. <laughs> I'm doing some like one-on-one -on -one meetups. I'm going to some other people's events to meet people that I've been talking to. Um, just like, Hey, let's just meet up in a coffee shop type stuff. And it's really simple and it's not overdone. And then, you know, let's see how it goes. Like, Hey guys, well, I can teach you, I can teach you how to do lead generation, which is one of my big specialties is filling the front of that funnel. So, um, I've already been talking to people like, Oh gosh, can I, can I bring my notepad when I talk to you? I'm like, yeah, bring your notepad and we'll go, we'll go over your sales funnels for sure. So, but my next one will be I'm like, if you guys find this valuable and you know, other friends and colleagues that would like to sit down and I can go in depth with this then we'll do another pop-up event where it's specifically on one pain point that you have. So it's, it's that really, it's really thinking about the customer journey and, and the relationship piece of it. And, um, I think that there's a missing piece in a lot of the customer journeys that are out there in the online space going to live space. And, and this is one that I've been testing and tweaking and I'm like, Oh, it just, it's a really easy journey that way with them. So yeah, so I know you, not everybody gets excited about sales funnels, but a lot of people do. Well, I think for most entrepreneurs, like here's what I learned the value of it. I was, I was, it was at a time in my life, things were rough and I wasn't making much money and I was, um, I think I was watching football and I was talking to this other guy who's a coach and he goes, man, I'm such a good coach. He's like, if I could just show up and coach a room full of people and not have to fill the room and sell it, I'd just knock their socks off and I'd be happy to do that and just get paid for that. Yeah. And, I, and I started thinking, you know, I would like that. We're all good coaches. And I, and I realized that's the difference between the coaches who are successful and making money and the ones that aren't. It's who's filling the room, who has yeah. the capacity to fill that room. And, uh, that's it. It's not the better coach that wins. It's the, it's the coach with a better funnel. And then that's any business. It's, it's the business yeah. with the better funnel. And that's why, like when I said, I was excited to meet you because I'm already I'm modestly great at what I do. Uh, yeah. but I just got off with a mutual friend of ours named Natalie and we're working on her sales. Oh, I love it. And it's great. And uh, I think she's watching. So, um, oh, yay. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> yeah, if I don't figure out this funnel part, then it's going to really hem in my income and how much impact I can make in the world. So yeah. Natalie says, Hey, two of my favorite peeps. Oh, thanks. Natalie. <laughs> You're my favorite peep. I love Natalie. Yeah, she's, she's so much fun. Hey, someone's mashing those likes and loves. Thank you. You guys, if you like this, please do mash the likes and loves. It helps more people see this. So back to you. Yeah. So you live in South Carolina. Yep. Right? What city? Nor North Charlotte, North, North of Charlotte. Um, in so Charlotte, and then you're flying to San Diego. And who's paying for this trip? Well, I am. <laughs> so you're paying on your own dime to go do yeah. free events to put people yeah. into a big event. Yep, absolutely. You, when you shared that with me the other day, I was kind of blown away by it. I was like, wow, she's really put. And this is what made me think about this. It, 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 kind of going off topic, yeah. but I'll come back. Um, in the in the seminar slash speaker world, people like I'm sponsoring one of your events, so I could get on that stage. I'm paying a pretty hefty sponsorship fee. Uh, I think it's five figures. And then is it okay I say that? It's yeah. too <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, but other places people will sell on someone's stage and then they do a profit share. And some of the speakers yeah. walk at it 
But what came to mind for me is how much time and energy and money you're putting into getting those people in the room. Like you're paying for this yeah. whole trip, you're away from your family, you're going out for how many days? Five. I five, think it's five. five days. I mean, that's a big commitment, cross country, by yourself, putting this thing together, spending a lot of money for hotels and stuff. Like you deserve a return on that investment. And so for any speakers that are watching this that don't get yet, yeah. why it's worth it to sponsor or how they, they can justify charging sponsor fees or profit shares. That's why, because they, yeah. it takes, and I was thinking about this too, it takes time and money and energy to get people into yeah. your room, it, to market for any business. Yeah. Like it. So it's 60, it's now 66 degrees here and I love having the door open so Napa can go outside. But poor Diane is sitting here freezing. With oh. those okay. <laughs> so anyway, I just, I just want to bring that up. So back to you. So tell us about yeah. you. How'd you get into all this stuff? Or is there some, sorry, we some do, do you mind if I just piggyback on that? You know, and I, and I think that this is the community piece too. So, you know, this is for speakers and for anyone who's thinking about hosting themselves is that building the tribe, like as much as like flying out here is a lot of time, and it's a lot of effort building my tribe and my community and those relationships is even more even in the online space and there, it's so it's so essential so like if you are a speaker if you are a host then i really highly recommend building your own community as well no matter where you are in the game like that's a huge piece and that does take a lot of effort too you and i are working on it jace for yours <laughs> It, yeah, well, tell me more. Why do you think community is important? And by the way, Natalie just commented, poor Diane. Natalie, I want to point something out. <laughs> Diane, it's freezing and she has no socks. What's one of the first things you put on when it's cold? A hoodie. And then the second is. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta cover the neck and the feet. <laughs> Get your, do you want some bottles of socks? I am a okay. I'm not that uh, cool. Can you go grab your shoes so we can show people what you wear on these cold 60 degree weather days? It's almost 70 degrees. It's not that cold. <laughs> this is super important right here that we do this during our- Yes, so it is. You can tell how serious I like to be on the lives. I think people, I do think this for speakers. <laughs> this is, she's so typical Idaho. This is typical. Oh, I love it. These are they Birkenstocks? Awesome. They are keys. They are worn out like crazy, but they have traveled the world and I've had them for 12 years and they're not going anywhere. So. This is like what <laughs> most women in, in Boise wear, but this is the funny part. It's She's freezing. She's got her hoodie and her long pants and there's not even coverage for the feet in there. <laughs> well, you put your socks on and then put them on. Yeah, you should, yeah, that'll work too. You need to put socks under those sandals. <laughs> we do that in Maine. We wear socks in our Birkenstocks until November, even if there's snow. We do. It happens. Smash the like button if you think that Diane should wear socks underneath her sandals the rest of the day, and we'll get pictures of it. Smash <laughs> that. By the way, uh, Natalie says, poor, no, and Bob Donnell says, we love Diane. Oh, we love <laughs> Diane. Bob is Diane. Do you know Bob Donnell? I don't think so. I don't think I've had the pleasure yet. Um, we'll have to introduce you. Bob, um, I'll do a private invite to connect you. Bob is a real influencer and just one of my favorite human beings. Wonderful. And he has a thing called Next Level Connect where he helps people level up their business. He has a lot of contacts and influence out in SoCal area. Really good. Oh, wonderful. Yes, I'd love to, love to meet him. Cool. So, um, Bob, thanks for popping in. But uh, just so you know, uh, we got a bunch of hearts come up, so you're gonna have to wear socks today. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, but they have to be cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. So back to you, Danielle. What? Uh, let's hear your story. Like, what got you into this? Why are you doing events? Are you a coach? What do you consider yourself? Like, who are you? Who is Danielle? Who am I? Well, I'm a 10 year overnight success for one. So I've been around. <laughs> Everyone seems to get that one when I say that. They're like, yeah, me too, me too, me too. Like I'm 20 years and um, you know, I've been around and I started really as a copywriter. So when I first jumped into the entrepreneurial space, it was, it was to be a copywriter because I love writing. I've known since the second grade that 
I was going to be a writer. And I was telling every, I was telling one of my friends this morning that she's like, I keep wanting to call you Danielle Steele. I'm like, well, that's really interesting because that's who I was actually named after. That's cool. uh, I was named after. So I'm just destined to be a writer, I think. And, but with copywriting, you really have to understand to write good copy, you have to understand the customer journey. And in order for me to understand the customer journey, I needed to get in behind the scenes. Before you go further, yeah. what's the customer journey? The customer journey is the journey that a customer, when they first meet you, whether it's online or in person, what they go through in order to go from just a cold, cold prospect, somebody who doesn't know much about you, to a paying client. So that journey into from prospect to paying client is the journey. Yeah. Is it a journey after they first start paying you or that's, that's all that gets really tracked out? Well, I mean, with the funnels, that's what we track. Um, but yes, afterwards, then it's, then it's all about, um, it's all about customer service afterwards and how you're, and, and that's just something that's completely different when you're tracking it. But for, for sales funnels and copywriting, my specialty is the front of the funnel, which is pros- cold prospect to paying client. Yeah. That is such an amazing skill. So could you give us an example of that, of something front of the funnel? The front, yes. The customer journey, like make one up. Well, okay. So let's, let's three free freebies, lead magnets. Um, Those are, uh, it's, it's free information that you are giving to somebody to entice them to sign up for an email list or to go into your Facebook group and these things like I liked I call them prospect pools I should probably coin that because it's a little bit of my environmental science background but you are really I call them prospect pools where you're you're putting people in a platform where you can nurture them further it's like we're gonna put you in the pool so we can warm it up you know and <laughs> warm you up and, and move you along to maybe a, a lazy stream I don't know so that's usually what I call <laughs> go down the lazy stream <laughs> the tube or something um but that's that's like what we're trying to do is we're trying to entice them to actually come into the pool to get to know us more have a drink stick around um so lead magnets are a really great way of doing that and people have tons of different lead magnets they can have an ebook webinar series i mean right here what we're doing is a lead magnet as well and we're posting it out on you know social media so new people can see it this is this is a a wonderful little lead magnet into a potential prospect pool. So does that help? Or did you want to get like me name a client and walk it through all the way? <laughs> name a client, walk it through if you don't mind. Go ahead, the more, go, yeah. The more real, the better. So people can get their hand around like what we're doing. Yeah. So let me see if I can, you know, cause a lot of people are like, how do I do it now? And you know, there's ways to do it. Like meeting a cold prospect and getting them to buy from you in a day. Like I, I can do that really quickly. And you know, let's just say that you know your avatar. The first step is really knowing who your ideal clients are, who you work best with, who you get results for. And you're confident about those results because you've already, you've already gotten this type of client results. So let's just say, uh, I don't know, Linda. We'll just say Linda. L came to mind. So I'm like, we'll just say Linda. Linda's out there on social media in a group where, and it's a marketing group where she's looking for marketing help because she's terrible at it, right? She's just not good at marketing. She has no idea. She's new to the business, uh, the entrepreneurial thing, and she's looking for all this help. So, you know, in that group, as a as a front of the, filling the front of the funnel specialist, a lead generation specialist, I know that in that group, there's a ton of Lindas. I know there's a ton of Lindas. I know how they feel. You know, I know how they feel. I know what they're going through. I know the next step they need to take in order to get their first paying client or. How do you know how they feel and what they think? It's part of when you're creating that customer avatar, right? Is that you actually dig in deep to the feelings of it. And, you know, one of the things that I do is I, I actually step into where I was three or four steps back. That's the first thing I do. And I get an idea of like, okay, this is how I felt. This, these are the concerns I have. And so that I'm not just pulling from my own experience, then I'll go and ask other people who would be, who would be a perfect client for me. I'm like, how are you feeling right now? Let's, let's really talk about this. Let's, let's hear the bad stuff, you know, give me it all. And I'll just sit back and listen, which is really you know, that can be really challenging when you're, when you're, you know, leading an industry and, but just sitting and listening to them and 
pulling out information is how you're going to feel into a customer. They're going to tell you exactly what they're going through if you hold that space for them. And when you have, yeah, when you have that information on top of your own experiences, then you can really start customizing that, that customer avatar that client avatar even more thoroughly and it you know and i think people miss over they glaze over this like oh well it's just a generic customer avatar like if you go really deep with these avatars and really understand what they're going through and with the intention that i want to help them get to the next step what do i need to create in order to do that and when you set that intention as a professional, then it's going to come to you or somebody's going to say something and it's going to give you an idea or you're going to collaborate with someone else that can kind of help share some ideas with you. And just having that and then moving forward with creating like a lead magnet that does help them get to that next step and a program that does help them not only get to the next step but the next level. That's when you have a lot of success. How do you get someone to have this conversation with you? You know, that's a really good question. People just seem to want to talk to me, but there's. <laughs> well, actually, that, that was my point. It's so I, what I'm thinking about is, you know, hopefully watching this, 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 uh, this video, this Facebook live, there's yeah. some new coaches, there's some middle coaches, whatever. But I, yeah. what I've experienced with a lot of these coaches is it's, they're afraid to talk to the one yeah. newer coaches. You said have, you said you want to have the confidence you can produce results for someone because you've done it. Well, for a newer coach, yep. that can be very difficult. Yep. Two, um, you know who it is you're serving, and all you have to do is literally ask them questions. Where are you? Why are you stuck? How are you stuck? How can I help yep. you? Yep. And, and people will tell you. It's not like a hard thing. And then you're doing something that I think is so great. You're asking them how they are. Well, and I do this, I do this in a lot of, like, I call it little tricky ways. When, when I'm on Facebook, I'll ask open-ended, open-ended questions where it takes a longer conversation. And here's the fun thing, guys, is everybody wants to talk about themselves. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be seen. And if you are setting that intention and you're asking those questions, like, I just want to get to know you. Really? You don't want to tell me? I'm like, I'm not going to sell you anything right now. I just want to understand what's going on with you. Um, And if I can help, then I'll give you, I'll give you some things that I've seen help, you know, and that's a discovery call. So you can do those on, I mean, you can do those with meeting somebody on Facebook. You can do that. I mean, LinkedIn is a great place right now and everybody is going to LinkedIn and, and they're just sending them a link to a sales pitch. I'm like, actually, you know, just see if they like what you're doing and you like what they're doing and they want to jump on a call and like, no, no sales. I just want to see what's going on. Or if you even just say, Hey, listen, I'm doing market research because I really want to understand what my customers are going through. And, you know, if you would love to jump on a call with me, I'll, I'll give you a free strategy session or I'll give you a gift card to Amazon, whatever it takes to get them on, on a phone call with you. I mean, heck I've, I've given out Amazon gift cards to get people um, on the, as a thank you, as a thank you for getting on the phone with me and doing market research. It's if you think of it as an investment into helping people further, then it's a lot easier to do stuff like that. That's awesome. So um, I have a follow up question on that, but before that, we yeah. yeah. could be that blanket. I'm a little cold. Absolutely. It's not for you. <laughs> that was smooth. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to share, right? <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm just guilty. <laughs> I, was the I was waiting for the right time for that. Like, I know, like, if Natalie's watching, I know she's like, ah, I can't believe you did that. Here. You're gonna share. You're gonna share. <laughs> you know what we'll do, Diane, when it's winter and it's snowing out, we'll bundle oh. up and we'll do our stuff from outside. <laughs> okay, now we all have blankets. You need a blanket. See, this side's Dallas oh, Cowboys. The, and this oh, side. the Cowboys! One of my one of my uh, friends, her husband loves the Cowboys. So smart man. Yeah, yeah it's smart man. Cool. And ex and her kids made this for you. There's my college team. And there's my pro team. So uh, real quick, update you, um, Natalie, when we were talking about get them in the pool, she said, put the pros- prospects in a Petri dish to see if they grow. <laughs> I could use that. I worked with Petri dishes back in the day. <laughs> and Tina Torres said, can you say, hey, girl? 
Hey, girl. I, I, I still miss it. how Tina's voice sounds. <laughs> um, she said, building relationships is the first thing you need to do. Yeah. Yep. I have no yep. clue how Tina's voice sounds, by yeah. the way. No, that, that was pretty good. Tina, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so great. Okay, so we're talking about the customer journey. So we're talking about creating and crafting that. So first is, just a recap, we discover where they are and we discover yep. what they're thinking, feeling, and we do that by one. And you guys, if you're new, just go yep. back to, so uh, Natalie, if you're still watching, can I share some of the stuff we wrote? Let me know, um, I wanna talk about your journey. So one thing you could do is just think about where you were and the challenges you went through. So like for me, when I'm speaking, you're kind of sharing the customer journey from stage in a speech, in a presentation. And you're doing it, what I believe, by sharing your story or like it's, a, it's kind of like a hero's journey in a way. So for me, it was, uh, I was a realtor and a real estate investor and all these people were making way more money than me and it really pissed me off because I knew I was as good as they were, I knew as smart as they are, but I wasn't nearly making the income they were. And it really was frustrating for me. And part of that too was I always felt like I was made for more, like made to do some great stuff, but I wasn't doing anything like that. And so when I share that in a room, I see the eyes go, the people in the room, I, I, they're where I was. They got, and, and uh, like, so when I started that, I, I only had myself to draw upon. But then as I started to understand marketing more, I started to have more conversations with people and literally go, where are you? And here's something I do. I make it a practice to ask people, um, what are your biggest, what are your three biggest challenges? What are your three biggest goals? I have not been asking them, what are the three emotions you experience the most and what are you thinking? I will start adding that. Uh, can I use yeah. that? Is that all right to use? Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. The more the merrier use that. I mean, that's how we can connect more. Okay, cool. All right, so we, we find out that and then what happens on creating this journey? So, and I just want to piggyback off of all the awesome information you gave too. And, and for new coaches, here, here's the other thing is that you, if you're doing something you love and, you know, solving problems for people and building out their coaching business, and there's something in your past that has made you an expert with what you're doing. There's something, there's results. And, you know, some of the things I do when people are like, and what is it the the fraud syndrome right frauds oh gosh i mean even the everybody goes through that at least once at least once oh that's and, quantifiable i actually get excited yeah. when my clients it, it, yeah. did this happen for you uh, at some point yeah. Danielle? did you go like they think i know what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> all the time <laughs> it's it's quantifiable it's actually to me it's a great step when what a client of mine is having as so much success on stage or yeah. they're selling a lot as a coach or they made a book or a product and they're like, holy crap, people think I'm somebody. Don't they know I'm just this person that was a wreck X amount of years ago? Like that is such a good step, but it, because it, it, it means you're making progress. Yes. I and love I that. Have, I love how you put that. I do have a solution for that too, but I'll share it after you go. To share it after um yeah and i just you know what i tell everybody i'm like there's you've you've already had success you're just not recognizing it and that's when it's a really good time to write out all the successes you've had all the jobs that you've had for one every job what you did what were your biggest you know what were the biggest aha moments during those jobs what were the things that you solved when you're on those jobs like even um for me i had to go back to what my first job which was potato picking in northern maine <laughs> potato picking what was it that I was? I would not have guessed that. I would you not. Never, have that. No, I, I was a potato picker. And then I worked on the harvester. That was my first job. I think I was eleven. I think I was eleven. Did when you work I went. On the harvester? Yeah. Oh, on the harvester, I had to be sixteen because <laughs> it was machine and you know all that stuff. But potato picking is actually like a tractor will go by and it will dig up the potatoes and then we just go and fill up our baskets with the potatoes and dump them into a bigger barrel. That's what potato picking is, yeah. And that was my first job. <laughs> That's, by the way, it's all we have in Idaho. Snow and potatoes. That's it. Just so you guys know. <laughs> I didn't tell you I used to pick it's potatoes. A common misconception. Potatoes are not even our number one cash crop. Weed? Right? A grass. 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 Is like, our number one? Like, like hay. grass? Like hay. Like grass. Yeah. 
like that makes hey, sense like, hey. wait hey, like like grass in my backyard or hey like fields of hay like tall grass that gets cut and sold to people to feed their animals yep and make the animals make their bed with it pigs make their bed with the hay yeah it reminds me of one of my <laughs> favorite old jokes but i don't know if it's okay to say it anymore <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking about it. We should give him a I'm moment. Thinking about, I'm thinking about how, how I can say it that's socially acceptable. <laughs> Did you know I used to be a flight attendant? You see what? A flight what attendant? Flight attendant? Yeah. I was just thinking that. I didn't know if you told me that or not. I'm like, wait, who do I know that was a flight attendant? So uh, you're the one. <laughs> yeah. So I'll say this. What a flight attendant cows eat. Hey! <laughs> I think that was okay. Can you just go to pull the behind me? Okay, it's all in if you're good with saying it. That's all that matters. <laughs> way, way off target. So, so I, Natalie, yep. I told her, she said I could tell her story. She says, you were just saying that things, yep. well, you were telling us about your job. So finish telling us about your job, and then I'll tell Natalie's yep. story to tag on. Yeah, so I, I went back to my potato picking job, and it's just like, what is it that I do? Like, well, you know what? I really learned hard work. <laughs> I learned hard work and long hours, and that has served me so well with developing other skills. Because I know that it takes it takes hard work to build something amazing. So that that's that was my first job. It was hard labor and work and long hours, and I yeah. loved it. And I loved what I really loved was I loved the moment at the end of the day where the sun was coming down and we're just about ready to stop. And it was just still, right? There was just still just a little bit of the potato dust coming up, wafering off. And it was almost time for everyone to pick up. And you just kind of looked back in the field and like all, like it was a huge field at the beginning of the day with all the weeds coming out of the ground that where the potatoes were still in the ground. And then you look back at the end of the day and just like, look at what we accomplished today. We got that whole friggin' 200 acre field done. All of us did. That was like my favorite part of the day. It's like all that hard work went into picking all these potatoes this whole field was they were they were underground and at the end of the day when we were just about ready to leave it's done we did that um, so how does that tie into the customer journey it ties into like that that small job of mine i had i had a huge huge aha moment when i looked into it just like i like to work hard and i like to complete things and that is something that i really tapped into with copywriting and digging into the technology behind the copywriting and that was enough for me to be confident when i talked to people and i stepped into the field like how would it feel for you to just get done what you want to get done in copywriting or in technology and feel that completion so that story piece that potato picking piece a lot of people can relate to the feeling of completion awesome. and you know, and I tell people, I'm like, you have something like that. You have something like that in a job that you've done and an experience that you've had that you're just not tapping into for your own confidence. That's a good way to build confidence when you're new to coaching. It's that piece mm -hmm. of it. So um, Natalie's story, and, and it's fresh because I was just helping her write her presentation. Uh, oh, nice. A one on one before this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So her job was with a hospital and she would create um, trainings and programs to help save lives. And she was sharing too, like she would have to do CPR on little babies sometimes, like, like big deal stuff, right? So she would create these training programs and she did that for 15 years and then they were gonna move her to a position she didn't like and that position was gonna take um, too much time away from her family and, and what I believe when you write your story and you're creating your story to bring out your journey, which then triggers your audience to bring out their journey, uh, she had, she realized two things because it was going to require her to work like nights, weekends, all this crazy hours. One, she was having health challenges and it would have really wrecked her health. And then two, that, um, and this is the line we wrote, she realized somebody else would raise her children because she wouldn't be around. And so, like, yeah. when she lands that in front of a, like, <laughs> perfect, right? When she lands, oh, right? That's yeah. the reaction we want. Because yeah. we want the audience to go, holy crap, if I don't change, that's my future. And so then they're going, yeah. what'd you do? But they're not just listening for the story. They're listening because they want access to a breakthrough for themselves. So then she goes, I realized I had to make money some other ways. And then she's like, how could I take my expertise and turn it into income? 
So what she came up with is she realized her expertise is creating training programs. So now she helps other people create training programs that they can then sell to create more income. So what's beautiful is her journey was she learned how to take her expertise and turn it into income. And now what she does for her coaching clients is she turns their expertise into income. So it's a beautiful linear progression and she's bringing to the world the solution that helped her change. And so for me, what helped me change back when I felt like I was meant to do bigger things and make more money, I learned how to sell and I changed my subconscious programming. And now everything I do is through that. And then public speaking is how I've grown my business for the last 17 years. So now I'm teaching other people how to use public speaking to grow their business. So um, what you've been through on your, not you, Danielle, people watching, what you've been through on your journey is the journey that your clients will take. You're just short circuiting it because you've, you've gone through all the heartaches, trials and tribulations. So, yeah. So let's keep going from there. Yeah. That makes you an influencer too and a trailblazer. So I like to tell people like, you're just, you're doing it. So pat on the back for you for stepping up when other people aren't and you get to show everyone else. So it's, it's really, it's really quite amazing when you can shift that perspective. Like, Oh, this is really hard. Today's really hard. This week's really hard. This year's really hard. And just like, yeah, but you're blazing a trail. You're blazing a trail for your clients and those that are meant to work with you that you're meant to speak to. So I think you need to be strong. Heart strong. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have a lot of heart in this. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. It's not. I like how you said that. You know, t- that tying with your potato story, too many coaches out there don't yeah. say how much work is needed. And it, like, yeah. when I was being trained as a speaker, they're like, make them think it's just going to happen overnight when they buy your stuff. And uh, like, it's a magic bullet. And, and in a way, the right coaching program is a magic bullet because it works. But on the other hand, it's like that potato thing you talked about. It's a lot of work to get there. It's yeah. And then you look at what you're about to do. You're flying cross country for five days and putting all this time and energy to get people to an event to then yeah. make global coaching programs that you'll then fulfill on. It's like here at this moment of sale is not to me, sale on is easy. Working with people is yeah. my sweet spot. That's my gifting. It's all the work that happens before the sale that's hard yeah. for me, which is your stuff. So all right, so let's keep going with that client journey. Do we go way too off base yeah. with that? No, I, I mean, I think that I, I feel like the conversation goes where it's meant to go with who's watching. Cool. Uh, Always. Tina said, yeah. love it. And so very true. Tina, thanks for watching. And she also said the dude in the back wants to be on TV. Oh, <laughs> oh. I, I was, I had a feeling I'm like, was there somebody that like, like popped their head in and did like <laughs> video bomb? <laughs> video bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a photo bomb, I was wondering if we we're gonna have some people like kind of watch what we're doing. Probably. <laughs> By the way, this is what it looks like. It looks really sharp. I did a watch party. Oh, That's I love it! I love it. Uh, here, I can share my screen with you. So what I what I have going on, just so you can see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on Facebook. So we're side by side, uh, and then you can see comments and stuff coming up. So it works out pretty uh, well. I love it. <laughs> yeah. We need to pay. We need to figure out how to get that Zoom out of there, and so we can put Speakeasy with Jay. So I might have to like upgrade my Zoom package. Underneath, yeah, yeah. that would be great. All right, so back here. <laughs> yeah. So the so that's a, that's the biggest part of the customer journey. If you guys can nail down your 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 perfect customer and what their pain points are, that you've really made the next steps really easy for you. Because then. You figure out where are they hanging out to solve their biggest problems that I can help them with. And everybody has places where they hang out for information. I mean, Google's one. Some people will just like, if I have a problem, I Google it. Is that your perfect client? Great. Then maybe Google ads are a way to put out your freebies and get in front of them. A lot of people find that support. They need support. They'll go on Facebook groups. Um, with a lot of the B2B, you know, business to business professionals and the way that LinkedIn is expanding their network, people are loving LinkedIn. And it's such a great platform right now when you're looking for professionals who are building their business as well. 
And I love that one for social media, live events. Some people are just like, I don't do online marketing, but man, I like to go to my live events when they're helping me solve a very specific pain point. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs, they are extroverted for one. I mean, even introvert ones come to the live events, but I know a lot of extroverted entrepreneurs where they're like, I cannot be behind my computer all day long. So I plan out to go to one event once a quarter or once a month, you know, for networking, to learn more material and to get out from underneath my computer and all of this. So, you know, it's just, you just knowing who they are down and then where they're hanging out to solve their pain point, their problems is the next step. And then once you do that, you create, you create lead magnets that help them. And this is where, this is where lead magnets are a lot of fun because you're not giving them the whole thing. You're just giving them a band-aid solution to a gushing wound. So Natalie will like this, right? She knows this stuff, but just a band-aid solution to something, to a much bigger pain point, just enough to hold them, hold them so that they get to the next level of working with you and you're going to help them solve the bigger pain point. So do you have any, um, guilt or qualms about only giving a bandaid gushing wound or what's your thought process around that? Well, no, not at all. Because if you think of it as they're not even ready for you to strap on the, <laughs> the big bandage, they're not even ready for it. So that's the other thing. If you give them everything that they need, but they haven't even gotten through the next step, then they may, they may not even be able to get through the next step if you give them everything. And me being an over deliver, I over deliver people so that I break their brains sometimes. Yeah. And that's not helping anybody if you put them in overwhelm. So the band aid solution is to get them to the next step, not the next level, the next step, because there's a lot of steps to the next level. That makes a lot of sense. Chip in anytime. So, Diane, by the way, so as you're watching, <laughs> Diane is like my right hand person. She's literally sitting <laughs> me right. She's awesome. And, um, She's she's learning the seminar business and also yep. sales and marketing. So you've had some sales and marketing positions. So yeah. anytime you want to chip in, please do. Every yeah. every, every day she goes to me. Well, did you know I was lead marketing for this company that sold climbing gear? And then, as you know, I was like, what? <laughs> so a big challenge. She doesn't tell up front. Maybe okay. you just didn't vet me too well before you hired me. Well, I vetted you perfect. <laughs> yeah, you're here. You're so, um, hey, I think what I'm going to do to end out on this live, you guys, whenever we end it, I'm going to pick four pairs of socks and you guys can vote on which <laughs> pair of socks Diane wears with her sandals the rest of the day. They're going to end up being cowboy socks, aren't they? <laughs> I wish I had socks. You don't have any? Oh, we got to get Jason cowboy yeah, socks. Yes. Cowboy, Jason socks. Some cowboy socks. Some cowboy socks. Okay, customer journey. So now, okay, so we've got other pain points. Yep. We did the research. So yep. we kind of put out some marketing that says if you have these pains, sign up for this free report. Yep. This, you know, we call it, let's say we call it lost leader, lead gen, giveaway, whatever you want to call it. Yep. And then what? And then what happens then? So they get that and they digest yep. it. And then what? They digest it and then it's time to see if you can help them to the next level. So there's a lot, this is the call to action part of it. So yes, another part of a call to action is go download my freebie PDF on this particular solution I'm giving you. You also want to have that second, that second call to action is like, let's hop on the phone because, you know, I know that this is solving one of these pain points, but I have a next step solution. And that's where you get on the phone call to see what is it that they're really dealing with? How did they like the freebie? That's the other thing people don't really think of is when you're, when you have a freebie, do you have something to follow up with them? Like, how did you like it? Did it help? Did it not help? Let's get some feedback. If it didn't, let me take 10 minutes and say, okay, well, have you thought about A, B, and C and trying that? And then if they're still struggling, they're like, you know what, I really help people in this particular area. And these are the results that my clients get with me. And if this is a result that you're looking for, then we should talk about working together more closely because, you know, personally for me, when I work in a group setting with my clients or in a one-on-one, -on -one, they move so much faster. Mm -hmm. They move so much faster. They get so much more done and they have much better results. And if I was just to say, 
you know, okay, you got the freebie, great. And no, I don't need your program, Danielle. So I'm really doing them a disservice if I don't get on the phone with them and at least tell them about the next step product and how they can have those results and how it's going to help them with the next step. So that call to action is essential. And it's, you know, it's a second call to action after they've already gotten the call to action to download a freebie or to sign up or to get into the prospect pool. So that one can be a lot of different things for a lot of different people. It depends on your customer journey again and how your customers will naturally flow through the journey or what questions they're naturally going to have or what, I mean, if you've got a freebie solution and it's great, but they actually need a little hand holding, then offer them a freaking hand, right? And get them on the phone. That's awesome. Yeah. And then what happens? <laughs> you really like the going deep. I love this. This is great. Well, so, I mean, before we do that, sorry, uh, Tina has some more comments. If you could, yes, if you could play the part of Tina for us. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's Tina's voice like? Uh, can you describe it? Is it country at all, or a little bit, a little bit, a little, little bit country, a little, little twang, little twang. She's got this nice attitude, and you know, she's. She's got She's uh, extrovert. Can you Spanish in there? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Right, Tina? Puerto Rico. She's Puerto Rican with a little country yeah. and a sass twang. Yeah. She, she's got, she's very, she's very heart centered and she's got a nice little sass to her. I don't know if she's ever been described that way, but it's fun. So if you could please uh, play the part of Akita <laughs> with heart centered sass, country, Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, Tina, I am not an actress, so if this offends you in any way, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> and I'm not exactly sure what this comment mean, means, but Tina says, uh, go put that dollar in the slot for me. Oh, she's talking to me because I'm in Vegas. <laughs> oh, okay. Because <laughs> I've got slot machines over here. Do you owe her a dollar? No, she just said, go put a dollar in the slot machine for me while you're in between. <laughs> oh, she so said, she should put that dollar, which made me go think. Go put that. Oh, yes. Okay. Not a dollar, dollar, that dollar. That dollar. That very dollar. specific dollar. Yeah, specific very, dollar. And then I didn't know it had a specific said, dollar. <laughs> double hockey sticks, no. Do you want me to say She said, hell no. <laughs> oh, what? I don't know if I'm about that. I'm I hope that was, that. Uh, Tina, I hope that was Oh, she says, I'm from San Diego. <laughs> oh, yeah, she is from San Diego, but she she told me she's Puerto. Am I wrong? I thought I could have sworn she said Puerto Rican. That's oh, her. I don't know. So she is. Oh, that's right. She has a little. Tina, you have a little bit of a southern, just a little bit, because she's lived in the south for a little while. Mm. But I wouldn't I say that. she sounds like she's from San Diego. Yeah, for those of you guys watching, because there's a delay with the comments from when we talk, we're not exactly sure. Like she just put <laughs> yes. I'm not sure what thing she was saying yes about. I think she was saying yes to you wearing socks. It was just the way. So, okay. <laughs> so, Perfect. Put that dollar in. So, okay. <laughs> okay. So, our customer. Here's one thing I want to point out, though, that I love that you do. Uh, two things. One, yeah. everything you're putting together, she says. Could you read that last part for me? She says, uh, no, I am Puerto Rican. Okay, I got that right. No country accent, really? Oh, she didn't know. Okay, what? I didn't think she sounded what San Diego. Really, that was very <laughs> so called. Really? Okay, my apologies. <laughs> I, but you know, I sound Canadian because I'm from the north, so I accents are not my thing. <laughs> Wait. Okay, got it. So, um. Well, Tina, we'll have you on one day so we can hear what your accent really sounds like. Send us a, send us a video clip. We'll play it. I, I will say she doesn't sound like a lot of the San Diego people either. So that's, I think that's a compliment too. She sounds like herself. Sounds like herself. Like Tina. That was a great save. Yes. So the two things you really, really love. One, everything you've talked about on this customer journey is, yep. is client focused and that yes. you're bringing out you're talking to them, finding out what they need, building it around them. What you guys, if you're new to marketing or writing a presentation in sales, that's all it ever is, truly. If you can yeah. just take yourself out of it and make it completely client focused, you will do more sales. Second, um, I love that you wear those giant headphones. <laughs> 
They're gamer headphones. Can you tell everybody when I get why you have these giant headphones on? Okay, so I have been through, so I don't know what is going on with me in the last year, but I'm breaking my technology, and it, which is really frustrating because I'm on tech all the time. And I've gone through tons of headphones and microphones. And somebody just said, like, Danielle, your audio needs to be better. And I'm like, really? I've got this big mic, like, right by my face. How is this? And I keep breaking stuff. Like, go get some gamer headphones. You're going to sound really crisp and clear. Um, it's noise canceling. And so I did it. And it does. The audio is great. Nobody's ever complained about my audio. And I haven't broken them yet. So, you know, but if you think about gamer headphones, they're not going to break easy because people get mad and throw their headphones like when they lose a game and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they have to build these really tough. Yeah, they're made to withstand the attitude of a teenage boy. So Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I and mean, it's perfect, TV. right? And then TV says... She wears those headphones because she has big hair and big brains. I do have big hair, big brain. I tell people that all the time. I put my glasses on. They're like Harry Potter glasses, and I end up looking like some kind of weird hybrid between Harry and Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our, my, so our, our, our people that are watching, if they're still on, the ones who are like results-driven, have to be going crazy because we're all over the place. <laughs> and then the people who just want to be entertained while they learn are probably like, this is awesome. It's so <laughs> but this is how it works. Like let's have some fun. Let's yep. be all over the place. Let's talk about what pops in our brain, then let's come back to yep. home. Because for yep. me, like you and I were talking about this the other day. Like I hate doing stuff alone. Like I freaking yep. hate it. You know what I would like? I just huh. He's, he's like he's contemplating. He needs you just got to do this with your hands. You're always <laughs> above his head when he makes that. <laughs> <laughs> what happens, okay, so if you guys watch it, what happens is when I click on something in my brain that I think will sell or that has high yeah. value for the marketplace or like if I'm writing a presentation, you know, you get like your hair stand up, like I'll get some kind of a, a feeling in my body and what just clicked yeah. me was, oh, I just got emotional, which I know that, wow. I was going to say, I would love while I'm working to have something like this on in the background so it's live, I'm not alone. I feel like I'm a part of something and I would be more likely to do more work because I could chip in. And so I just realized, yeah. oh, that's really sweet. We're providing that value for people now. And then it made me click yeah. in, how can we do something that's maybe eight hours a day, not us talking for eight hours, but different people, but it's live yeah. and people can chip in. So I just think if I feel that way, I bet there's a lot of people who don't like working alone and feeling alone and would like that live yeah. company. Yep. Just we do that. We, we do that. My group program, we call it implementation labs. So yeah. they're labs. Yeah. If you think of, oh, well, I have a, I have a background in science. So we would have really long labs once a week and they're like three to four hours where we were going in, we were doing um, experiments, you know, recording results and everything. We're doing it in a group setting. So I brought that into what we're doing in like our masterminds and our group programs. And they're, they're just, they're implementation labs. And I say, I'm like, bring your copy, bring your copy content, bring your passwords to your WordPress websites and let's, let's actually get it done. And we're going to share a screen on zoom. So it's a really great part of a program where, and it's a huge value add to your clients as well, because then you get, they get handholding, they get handholding in something that they don't feel totally comfortable in doing themselves it's a, it makes a huge difference of what you do like what the structure looks like please well the implementation labs are anywhere between an hour and a half and two and a half hours once a month once a month and then we just everybody gets a turn and we try to time the turns and we get something done and if they and and i i i give a lot in my master friends like if they don't complete something I'm like, you know what, just grab some time on my calendar. We'll make sure this gets done. Um, not everybody has to do that. And yes, I do work a lot. So I wouldn't recommend it for everybody, but it works really well. If people can have something where they're struggling and it could be copy content. And then you've got the input of other people in the master class around you or in the mastermind around you pitching in. It's really, it really moves the needle forward for an individual. So... <laughs> Sorry, the mailman must be here or something. Uh, <laughs> someone's yeah. walking around the yard. 
Okay. It's a company. Um, sorry, you guys. I apologize, but we're live, right? Yeah. But his hackles are up. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, it was the Amazon guy. Hey, we got something delivered. Should we unbox it? From the Amazon. Huh? Yes. I yes, just I have a, I got blink cameras, and there's like my view of the front door. Um, oh, nice. I didn't have the motion sensor turned on, so it didn't click. But I gotta tell you guys, I, I never got the value of having a security cameras before. No, I love it because like <laughs> coming up, we could look and see who it is. Um, anyway, so so where were we? I got totally distracted. Oh, so yeah. what you just triggered me for is my friend AJ Plague, who you know. Um, yeah. And AJ, you guys, he's uh, been a friend a long time. Taught me my first seminar. I ever took about doing seminars. So he used to do these things called do it now workshops and it would be a two or three day event. And it was literally what the name said. It was a do it now. So like one was on getting our website set up. So we'd go there and we all like one section, we all took pictures to put on the website. The next section we, um, we, uh, you know, like, like wrote copy for the website, a different do it now workshop was on writing our presentation. So literally like he teach a part, and then he'd go quiet, and we all would have hours to sit and just focus. So I'm yeah. thinking, like, I love your idea of a lab. I might start putting together some three- and four-hour do-it-now workshops where we teach. I have a guest speaker on. We teach a concept. But the idea is people do what they need to do during that three- or yeah. four-hour block. I know this for most entrepreneurs. Um, and if yeah. most of them are honest with themselves, if we could squeeze four good hours of work out of them a day, they yep. would make a million dollars or, or way more. Like most don't. They would get it completely done. Like you wouldn't believe what you can get done in four hours. Like you can get a complete freebie created, copy written, sales funnel done out the door in four hours. Cool. You can. Um, could you play the word of our Tina again, please? Or just whenever she comments. <laughs> She's coming to the San Diego event, so you're going to leave the beer. Well, and also, do you want to give info? So, you guys, I'm actually um, going to be doing my hypnosis show at this event. I'm bringing it, the hypnosis show back. I, I'm very exclusive where I do it. So, and as a side note for me with breaking my leg, and this is the reason I'm like, I'm sitting in a recliner because I like to keep my leg up as much as possible. Uh, yesterday, I don't know if I told you, Danielle, the doctors gave me green light to start walking on it again. So, like... Oh. Yes, she was going to baby hops and little steps. Little baby little steps. So, Gross. um, that's big. That's big. Today, though. Yeah. So, but my goal is I have to be in physical performance shape for your event. And then the week later is an event I'm doing. So, let's yep. give an info how people can go to your events. And, uh, do you have something? And, and by the way, also, I'm super excited to be at your event because filling the funnel has not been what I know. And I'm yeah. so excited. You guys, the money is in the list. And everyone I know who's doing multiple seven figures, even multiple six figures, they know how to fill it. And it's like being a speaker is great and crushing it from stage is great. What's greater is being the person who filled that room. Because if you can fill the room, then you can get speakers yeah. to come in. If you can fill the room, you can sell to the list over and over. If you can fill the room, you have all the relationships. So the speakers might come in. Let's say 300 person room. If you crush it as a speaker, you're doing 20, 25%. So now you know 60 to 70 people, 75 people. But if you're the promoter, you know all 300 people. And that gives you multiple times to sell. Every speaker that speaks on that stage, you're getting a cut. It's just, I'm glad I'm learning it now. Wish I'd learned it earlier. So uh, I'm excited to go. And I'll be like taking notes furiously and attending the entire event because I want to learn this. So yeah. I'm just going to make a, I'm going to make a quick link. I didn't have time to make one for you, but I'm going to make a bit.ly link for you so well, that we can try it. Can you play the part of Tina? Yeah. Tina wants you to unbox this, unbox this live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my kids yeah, do always, that. That's great. Well, <laughs> this is more than this. <laughs> she said she goes to your house to get lots of laughs. Okay. Yes, <laughs> she does. We have a good time. We have a good time. <laughs> And that San Diego is going to be awesome. And that That's you not what she sounds act. like. That's not how she sounds. You don't know how she sounds. Well, I know how I think she sounds that you did earlier. 
So my kids are constantly begging me to watch these silly YouTube channels where kids open up packages of, of uh, toys or things like that. So maybe this is kind of the same. <laughs> maybe this is the adult version. What Chase got in the mail today? Let's see. So. Um, Sponsored by Amazon. No, it's not. <laughs> Wish. You can get Amazon to sponsor you. I know what it is, though. So, I, Boise is really fantastic about, um, like, there's, are there even roaches here at all? Not really. There's really no pests here to speak of. Um, you know, there's ants, there's bees, but, like, in your house type stuff, it's very nice. There's only, there's starting to be some mosquitoes, I guess, depending on where you go. It's actually really nice how little, like when I lived in Florida, ugh, there's giant roaches and they fly at you <laughs> and tomato bugs. And if you're going to a convenience store at night, they always fly right at you. It's just gross. So there's only one bug here and they drive me freaking nutty. And so I think this is going to be a solution for that. Did you guys see the video? Did you guys see the video where somebody um had the Amazon package booby trapped because one of the big things, especially isn't that hilarious? Like glitter bombs and everything. Yeah. And that company that sells glitter bombs. I'm really surprised they get away with selling glitter bombs. I mean, not the ones that just fall out, the ones that explode. You guys don't know what we're talking about. This company, like you could. One, they have these cards, you open it, and all this glitter just falls out everywhere. And it's like, <laughs> but all the ones they have, it like explodes. Oh, so here, I open this. I sent a card to, I sent a card to a friend where it had glitter come out. I'm like, oh, good. This is going to just, like, make his day. I have glitter coming all over his floor. And I believe he's a pretty neat freak, so that's why I did it. Awesome. Have you seen that uh, that it's a southern thing where it's glitter, but they're talking about it like like um, getting infected by like a zombie? They're like, he got it on him, and they all start running away. Like, it's glitter. So this is what I have. It was a Dynatrap. It is a um, I don't know some kind of LED thing to trap flies because that's the one thing we nice. have here. Is they're nuts. We have a lot of flies during the summer because there's a lot of farmland around here. So yep. there's a lot of flies. Yep. So I'll let you know how well it works. Hopefully it works amazing. And uh, yeah, so that's what I got. <laughs> that's a nightlight. That's awesome. That's a... Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's like the extra oh. customer journey right there. Right? That that's the really extra. Nice. Yep. It's like a custom fly box. Customer. That's awesome. Custom fly box. So, all right, so let's actually do some real content. I want to give out the link where they can come, and then I want to give some real content on, on my view of the customer journey yep. and creating products and offerings that I think will be of massive value to people. Uh, no, yep. no joking for real, massive value. So, um, so I just messaged you the link, so you got it. Okay. Can, I got it. Um, you put it in the chat? Oh, awesome. Yep, so I gave you your own Bitly link. It's bit.ly forward, yeah, just look at the chat. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash. Does it have to be in capitals? Does it matter? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Probably. E-C live Jace. So it's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash. I don't want to see it popping up here. It's E-C live. And I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see what it looks like when you click this. So when you click this link right here, it's going to pop up a new window that doesn't work. Yeah. We better check that out. That one didn't work. It has to be oh, capitalized. You know, the, hyphen, yeah. the hyphen didn't attach is what happened there. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it is case sensitive. So. But I could do, I bet I could put it in there so it's not. I can put in another one. Yeah, it's bit it's fun. Okay, I'm gonna put it I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna put it all under case so it'll it'll do the same. Either way you guys go, I'll make sure that it's done. Yeah, I've got it. I'm gonna customize it. PC C live. You know what you know what's happening is when we paste it in. Facebook is hyperlinking my name to it, and so it's goofing it up. 
<laughs> like it's adding. Let me take, the, let me take more... the hyphen. Do you want to take the hyphen out of it? How about there? No, I think it'll work. Does that one work? Facebook stop. Hold on. Yeah, this one like. All right, so let me screen share. Now it works. So here's what's going to happen. It's a good thing we tested it. So if you want to go, just click this one right here, and we'll put it in the show description, and then it's going to pop this up. And it's Entrepreneur City, Influence yeah. Building. Yep. San Diego, October 18, 19. How much are tickets? Right now they're an early bird for 197 for mm -hmm. the two day. And then if you want the VIP upgrade and you guys want the VIP upgrade, it's 397. And for you guys, I tell you what, if you come in on that link and you let us know in this chain, you can bring a friend for free. So really? I'll you, yeah. Wow. I'll let you guys bring it as an extra bonus. But you gotta let us know in this in this chain. So what you do is by that, you guys, if you buy a ticket, comment or message me and say, hey, I got a ticket, and then we'll let yep. Danielle know, and yep. she will let you bring a friend for free. That's awesome. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Bring your friends. Well, you know, Jason and I were talking about this yesterday, and we don't like implementing or doing things alone. So live events are the same thing. I don't like going to them by myself. I have, like, an event I <laughs> go to events with. Awesome. Yeah, I'm super looking forward to this. One of the things I really looking forward to, you guys, is, is like attracts like. And Danielle's a giver and she's heart centered, so I'm trusting the attendees and the speakers will be. So Jane's power is going to be there. Matthew Clark, yeah. Lane, Barbara Ames. I don't yeah. know any of these people yet. Oh wait! Oh my goodness! Wait to meet them. They're let's, incredible. Let's talk about something really important. What do we all think about Danielle with straight hair? With the purple streaks. <laughs> With purple streaks. Is that right? I like it better, Curly. <laughs> you look great. I can, I can like get that a lot. You need to superimpose big giant headphones in this picture, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. I have a photo, and I put it in my email marketing with just me with my headphones smiling. And that's, oh. my, that's my photo that I use. And it's oh, just, like, awesome. from my uh, cell phone. Is this and I don't put that one in. That's that's Eric. That's the hubby. Tell us about Eric. Uh, he is the opposite of me in almost every way. <laughs> he is, well, he comes from big, big corporate. And his whole thing is operations. Like everything has to fit in place. And, and I credit that to his engineering background. Really? So he, yeah, he has a background in engineering, mechanical engineering. And then he went and got his MBA from uh, Carnegie Mellon's Tupper program in Pittsburgh. So one of the big, I think they're in the top 10, top 15, wow. top MBA programs in the United States. So he went and got the big MBA. And I credit, I credit what he has to say about strategy and business building to me taking the, this business to the next level. Like there's no way I would have been able to do it um, if I hadn't brought him in on entrepreneur city and so this is this is just as much his baby as it is mine so does he help coach people as well he he takes more of an operational role so if he's coaching people he's actually helping them um you know with their bottom line and having everything kind of work in their system place so that's more what he does and it's more what he's doing right now is more one-off work so more one-on-one, -on -one, one-off, you know, this is something we're just going to get this in place for you. But he's more of an action taker that way, yeah. That's great. People yeah. knew that. I mean, hey, you haven't published an agenda. Look at that. She got it. After hours. Yes. But it'll still be clean. <laughs> this show yes, is we're getting... <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, people dance, too. I'm not a good dancer, guys. That's not my thing. So if... If I do dance on stage, it will be awkward, and you guys will get a good laugh. I promise. <laughs> like the I mean, Elaine dance from Friends and uh, Seinfeld. Uh, a combination of that and Carlton, maybe from Fresh Friends. It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Tina has some more comments. Could you please do this in the Tina voice? <laughs> in the Tina full SoCal, full SoCal. OMG. 
you definitely want the VIP upgrade. <laughs> I think they've made a little more emphasis on it. The VIP upgrade? <laughs> it is perfect. <laughs> and then... She does do the finger thing, too. I love it. <laughs> Wait, let's look at... Yeah, let's look at I will wash this and make sure you buy one and get one. Okay, I don't know if this is going to get us a new That's fan. That's pretty good. <laughs> Let's just look at Tina's. I'll get her to see Tina. Let's look at Tina. Tina. Tina so sweet and see. in the picture. She does look sweet. Look at her little pink Tina. dress. Oh, you said we friends request. Yay. Confirm. Oh, she, she probably, does look she, like she is. She's it. probably just going to cancel it now, though. She's yeah. going to like, take it back. <laughs> Give me this for us. In Tina voice. But. And she does like shoes. She does like shoes. Conquer the world. That's Marilyn Monroe. I know, but Tina's one who posted it. So oh, she does okay. like shoes. And then let's see how. Oh, yeah. yeah, she does look happy. Oh, my goodness. She's such a cutie. Yeah. She definitely looks a little country, a little rock and roll. <laughs> she's, yeah, I mean, awesome. she's like the perfect combination of sass and, and heart centeredness. It's, it's incredible. Oh, that's oh and incredible. by the way, she says she's going to get you to dance. Don't you worry. Yes. We gotta start practicing now, Tina. <laughs> I guess we're gonna go clubbing when I get back to Charlotte. <laughs> so this is gonna be my new thing. Uh, oh, she says you nailed it. You <laughs> nailed her. So right now it's just you, oh, us, really and good. Tina on the live. I think that's all it is. <laughs> Private conversations at the death. So um, I think that's what I'm gonna do on all my future Facebook lives is just go through people's profiles, and we'll figure out what we can do. So. <laughs> Actually, I mean, that's a great if live. you want your profile gone through and your uh, voice predicted, please go ahead and leave a comment and we will take you into consideration. Yes. <laughs> that could be a whole thing. Oh is, gosh, your, is your hands, is your arms tingling now? Like, that could be a whole cool thing that we do. Well, actually, I'm looking up her thing. So, Nikki Johnson, I'm giving her a total shout out. Nikki Johnson and Candela, she is like my favorite. Dave, I'll do a screen share so you can see what she looks like too. She is like yeah. my favorite. Like, um, she's not just a photographer, she does lifestyle branding images. Like, yeah, that's not just a photo, that's like a photo, right? I don't know how yeah. she put herself so good too. And like, like you totally get like her essence in these. So I love her work. It's something I wrote with her that I don't know if she's using it, but I think she should. And it's your your image is your voice online. Oh, I love that. Isn't that great? That. Like that is great. How you, it, oh, here's our friend uh, Moira. Moira's from Ireland. But like you can get, just get a feel for Moira out of these photos, you know? Yes. Like there's a voice there. So uh, like yeah. we were kidding, saying we're going to go through people's profiles, but you guys for real, side coaching. Um, yeah. if, if, if it doesn't look sharp and say something, it's costing. Well, everything says something. What is your image saying? You know, that's yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I think I may need to hire on. her. <laughs> what? I do. I may need to hire her and say we got to have my headphones and curly hair if we're gonna do this. I think I already told you about her. She's in San Diego. By the way, you guys, uh, let me know if you ever want to meet Nick. She's based in San Diego, but she flies everywhere. Like people fly her around the world to do photo shoots. With her. So it, it's different. Like I have someone in Vegas who does my traditional um like headshot the more formal one and then nikki does lifestyle shots so uh, i i do want to give talk about the customer journey and then you have a flight at something yeah. and i wanted to come back to you on your customer journey. i'm actually here for a while i didn't realize i'm like oh gosh i'm gonna okay yeah we can totally do it live i don't have to run to my i don't have to run to anything for a while <laughs> good okay good well let's keep going so you guys uh, there you can get in or just get your work done so Here's where I was with the customer journey that I want to talk about. And that is, um, for me, there, there's the journey of awareness of you to the purchase. But then for me, what I'm looking to do, and I think it's what you're looking to do too, it's creating this program that gets them somewhere. And something I've started saying in my coaching is, is when people buy, it's not what they get, it's where they get. I'll say it again. It's not what they get. It's where they get. What's the destination you get them to? So for my coaching program for speakers, my destination for them is massive increase in income, 
massive impact in the world, and standing ovations. Like that's my goal for them. That when they finish working with us, they're getting standing ovations, table rushes, tons more clients. So the way we get people there, are you getting that? Are you getting feedback on your end? No. 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 I hear you really good. All right. So the way we get people there is. I've looked at, you know, we looked at their customer journey, like where are they before they make that first purchase? And then from that first purchase and they come to my three day event, what are their challenges now? What, how are they equipped now? What do they need to learn now? And I, and I look at if the perfect solutions were provided for them to get them to their next step in evolution as a speaker and as someone using speaking to sell, what would they need? Well, at my three day event, I talk about the importance of scripting, delivery, mindset. And we go as deep as we can in the time allotted. Like we do full on content for three long days. Um, they seem like short days, but they're, you know, 12 hour days. And then what they're left with after that is now they know the importance of scripting. They've been introduced to our template. They need to know the importance of delivery. We've given them some training on delivery, but now they know I really need to build a presentation with all these elements in it. So one of the things we offer is a program that builds a presentation with all these elements in it called your course script, and then I'll choose that one as an example. Now I know when they come out of yeah. course script, they're gonna have a course script. Part of what we talk about in scripting is how do you establish authority? How do you establish expertise? How do you, how do you establish that you're worth listening to? Well, the fastest way to do it is to have a book, to have an intro video works. So I know at the end of core, they're gonna be left in a space of, and what would best serve them is getting published as an author and having a professional video shot. And then other media appearances, whatever they can do to get on the media, whether it's a podcast, radio, TV. So the natural upsell from core would be to give them the opportunity to get videos made, to get them onto media or to train them how to be on the media and to get them published. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking to put in place. And so when I'm creating that, that journey for them i'm always looking at where are they and what will serve them best next and it's not like i'm just crafting something to sell them i'm truly bringing a solution to the table and my attitude is you know in the room there's some people they're, they're just not going to dig it okay then there's some people who like they dug it and they, they got what they got and out of a three-day event their life's gonna i mean i have so many testimonials of people that only did a three-day event they never did black belt and they got huge improvements in their life but some people in that room are going to be like, I'm ready to go for more. I'm ready to step up. I want to go to this thing. And, and by the way, this is exactly what I say when I'm offering it. I say, some of you, you know, this is it for your journey with us. Some of you, this has been great. This is all you'll do. And you're going to get huge results. And some of you, you feel like you want more and you're ready for more. And we're the ones to help you there. Here's what it looks like. And so it's all based on them. And uh, I find that just flows so much better. Absolutely. I love that. And uh, you're, you're getting, I mean, when you can get stuff done in a three day period, I mean, and implement too, it sounds like you guys are implementing as um, well. I have this attitude about homework and entrepreneurs and it goes yeah. like this. They won't do it. So <laughs> <laughs> I think there's research out there that if it takes them longer than 10 minutes, they're out. Like there's actual st statistics out there that with, right. uh, yeah. Like, I think, it, I can't remember if it's in the, it may be in the course industry. Like if you, if you're doing courses and it takes them, you have homework and it takes them longer than 10 minutes. I think there's a big percentage of them that won't do it. Yeah. 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 So the way I structure my courses and like my, you know, we have online calls, I endeavor to give them no homework and it, it gets done when we're together. So it's done. Yeah. I think that's why I really like the idea of this call for giving people a chance yeah. to do stuff at home you know, get it yeah. done. But anyway, with the courses, we do a lot of implementation so that when they leave, it's fun. I have a presentation written for, and a lot of our stuff is transformational such that they walk in one person, they walk out a different person. It's not like they have to work on it. They're just different when they leave. Yeah. Cause you show them their truth. You show them who they really are and they see themselves for that. Yeah. So let's talk back to you. So anything else on the table journey, filling the funnel, anything else you want to share? You know, there's, I mean, there's so many different pieces to it. I, I, I work really well when people have a specific question. Is there something that you want me to dig into? 
specifically I'll with the customer this. journey. So I've been connecting with people on LinkedIn and yeah. like messaging them. Hey, let's yeah. add, what do I do from there? I feel awkward going from, I, cause I don't want to be mercenary. Like, Hey, we connected. Now let me figure out a smooth way to sell you. I don't like <laughs> that. It just feels funny. But I also well, do want to see if I could serve them. So what do I do? Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the first thing is, is kind of releasing here. We're going to, we're going to talk transformation here is releasing the slimy, the, you know, like, and that, that's how, how you're going to come across and instead shift your thinking into like, okay, well, I can see their LinkedIn profile right now. Um, wow. There's some things I could really help them with. And I feel like I could really help them. So why don't I just openly have a conversation with them as if I was talking to them, except I'm typing on, Hey, you know, I think we're really aligned and I'd love to jump on the phone and see if, how I can support you or vice versa, or, you know, Hey, it looks like you do that. I'd be interested in hearing more. So the first thing is, is that you're just getting them on the phone to see if they're even an ideal client, right? There's only so much you can get from social media. How are you going from your interested in hearing more to your selling them? That's my distance. Oh, when you're on the call or on LinkedIn? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Because it's like, so, first it's like, hey, tell me about you. Yeah. I, you know, with LinkedIn, I never think I'm going to sell over Messenger on the message with LinkedIn. I never think that. Like it's never, it's always like, I'm just getting the, this is a cold prospect as if I'm cold email, emailing them right now. And I'm just warming them up so I can get them on a Zoom call or a phone call and talk to them further to see if they're even like, if they would even be a fit for one of my programs or if I would be a fit for theirs or, you know, if I know somebody that can help them. So I kind of take the, the approach that I just need to understand them more. And to do that, I got to go from LinkedIn to phone call. And also my intention isn't to sell them. It's to see what they need. What is it that they need and how, and how can I help them? Even if that means I send them to somebody else. It's that miracle on 34th street where. How do you even segue into the, what do you need? Uh, you just say, Hey, listen, I think that we're really in alignment with what we're doing and who we serve. I'd love to just get on a phone call to see how we can support one another, how we can collaborate. And sometimes, Sometimes, you know, I've even, I've even put a quote in about collaboration and how that there's strength in collaboration. But when I approach it from a very neutral standpoint and just like, maybe they can help me, maybe I can help them, but we have to get on the phone to see. Because the other thing is, is that if I don't, if I get on a phone call and I don't vibe with somebody, then I'm immediately like, this is not going to work. It has to be, it has to be a win for both of us. And I don't know that in la I don't know that just from texting or emailing. It has to be a conversation. All right. Okay. Um, we have for Tina oh. update. Tina says, oh, you want to look here? Oh. You're just building the relationship first. Yep. Yeah. You have to go bottom up. Okay. Oh, she's single. So you know. She's marketing. She's definitely marketing. She's marketing. All that amazingness um, and single. I am too. So we can we can go. Guys, you have to fly into Charlotte and take me to the uh, and show me how to dance, you ladies. <laughs> yes. Yes. The single. I'm not single, but it doesn't mean I can't go with you and be a good wingman. I'm a good wingman. Yeah. yeah I am. I bet you're great. Sure. With, you're great at marketing. I'm a great. Yeah, you know, I'm a good wing. I'm you a good up to the guys and you're like, let me tell me about you. I I do help my guy. I've helped my guy friends, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but usually the girls I can help really well. I'm a good wingman. That's yeah. awesome. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Well, did I, did I help you? Did I answer your question on yeah. LinkedIn? The next step. What are you comfortable with? I mean, that's the other thing. This is what I do, and this works really well for me. But it's all about you, Jason. What What is comfortable for you? Well, it, it, or it enough it, uncomfortable enough to get you to move forward. Not too uncomfortable, but yeah, that that's what I like because it's it's new. So. Yeah. I, I want to push into the uncomfortableness the best way possible. 
And I was thinking about this as I was doing it. I remember my first time buying a house, like an investment property, yeah. hanging out with this guy, Eric, who was very proficient at it. And I found this deal yeah. and I showed him the deal. And we went back to his yeah. office and he pulls out a contract and he puts it on the table and he goes, write it off. And I was like, and I remember thinking to myself, I was just talking. I was just talking crap. I was just showing you a fun deal. I didn't say this out loud. I was just thinking, I was like, I didn't really need to make an offer. And he looks at me and he goes, you write an offer or I'm writing an offer. And I got more scared of him stealing my deal and I wrote the offer. And I got that property. It was an awesome property. And so I, yeah. my point is, I think that hand-holding or being around someone who's very proficient at it, like I'm a, yeah. believer in for, I'm a believer in forced participation. What I mean by that is at my event, we don't force anyone to get on stage. We create yeah. an environment that's safe and encouraging. So once they get on stage that first yeah. time, usually then they're like, oh, oh, I'm okay being on stage. And then they get on stage. It's, it's you know, one out of a hundred doesn't get a breakthrough and want to keep coming on and coming on. And I think with yeah. different areas of life, like me doing the connect and through LinkedIn, working with you yeah. on it is making me do it. And then I'll get to the point where I'm like, oh, well, this is easy. It's just those first couple of times is hard. And so, and, yeah. and also I, I don't want to be unauthentic. You know, that's, I think that's where I'm hung up too. It's, I do want to know about their business and I do want to know how they're speaking. And I do want to know if there's a way I can help them. It just feels weird yeah. to just ask that. Yeah. Without having them. Like I like it in the seminar room, I'm asking who wants help in this, or I've already found groups of people that have been pre-qualified, and I don't know that, like for instance, one woman wrote me back on LinkedIn, because I've been doing a lot of reach outs, and she goes, I'm an amazing speaker already. <laughs> I thought it was hysterical, <laughs> but she's like, do you help find leads? And so I, I, I can yeah. help with that. It's, yeah. like, it's like I wish there was a way to know that they're interested. Or I guess yeah. getting to that point of finding out if they're interested in getting help with their speaking or positioning or product creation. Yeah. Yeah. And keep in mind that LinkedIn is another social media platform and it's a different one. It's like, it's having, it's like your resume on steroids too. Right. So I think positioning on LinkedIn is really, people are really strong with their positioning on LinkedIn. So, uh, well, I mean, I don't know this person, but my initial reaction is just like, well, are you an amazing speaker if you're doing A, B, and C, if you're getting A, B, and C, if you're booked out all the time? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of that conversation, just like, okay, tell me what, you know, tell me, yes, I know you've got this, this great content, and how is your speaking, how is your speaking journey and your career going? Like, are you where you want to be? And those are like those crucial conversations that we get to have with people. Like, are you where you want to be? And that's where you get to dig in deeper with anybody, even if they're saying, I'm a great speaker, I'm a great speaker. I mean, I get that all the time with people and I'm like, oh yeah, because I'm a host. I'm like, great, so what stages have you, what stages have you spoken on? They're like, oh, well, I've just done Facebook Lives. And I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's jump on the phone and, and let's, let's talk about this. And there's no judgment at all, just like that's where they're at. And I said, well, are you where you want to be? So that really opens up. Are you where you want to be with speaking? Are you where you want to be with your coaching career? With Are you where you want to be with the amount of clients that you have? Are you where you want to be in the results you're getting for clients? Do you care about getting results for your clients? And that's usually a, one that I throw in there because if they don't care, then I don't want to work with them anyway because that's not my thing. But I'll throw in some things just so I'm, I'm asking them open-ended questions so that they're in a safe space because you know it's not recorded unless they want it recorded and it's usually before i i'll ask them i'm like would you like some coaching around this some will say no thanks yeah i'm good um most will say yes and i'm like i can record this for you if you would like that and then you get to move you get to move from there but those open-ended questions when you're having a conversation and in linkedin typing them out are crucial and crucial in finding out where people are really at because they're going to come at you positioning regardless so you don't, you can't take that for face value. That's kind of where I come from on this. Okay. And if, there's always, there's always an opportunity. There's always an opportunity. Talk there's about an opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Well, just, you know, I remember talking to you 
uh, a podcaster, and I really respect this podcaster. And she she was frustrated with she thought that LinkedIn was really annoying because people were just trying to sell her and sell her and sell her and sell her. And I'm like, well, that's I said, yeah, I can I can totally understand that. And you know, since it's taking up time in your day to read the to read a LinkedIn message, I said how can you, how can you flip the switch on that conversation so that it is a conversation just like, Hey, that's great what you're selling. I don't have a need for it, but you know what? Let's jump on the phone. Maybe my clients will, maybe my colleagues will, but I have to understand more. And so when you can flip the conversation and thinking that there's always an opportunity and I always come from this place and I know some people don't agree with it, but I'm like, if you always come from that space of there's an opportunity to serve, there's an opportunity to help if they're willing to meet me halfway and jump on the phone and just see where it goes. Yeah. And it can be really powerful. And, you know, Jace, for you to just give you a little bit of, maybe if you don't reach out to them, another speaker coach will on LinkedIn. <laughs> I try to maximize the time. My time. So I either want to have one of my do it, or can we move some of those questions to the text? Like, are you where you want to be? And, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was just thinking a great question would be for them. If I had a 300 person stage and you could lead harvest or sell, would you know what yeah. you're going to talk about? You have your products ready. Yeah. Is that too yeah. hard to just ask? You know, it just depends on your customer journey. Would your ideal customer respond well to that? How would they respond? So if you go back to if you go back to the customer journey piece of it and you've got you've got amazing clients, you love your clients, you talk about them all the time, it's incredible. And you can even ask them, okay, if we were just meeting on LinkedIn, what would what would really get you to jump on the phone with me? Yeah. You just gave me the solution I needed. Thank you. Duh. I'm just gonna get on the phone with my favorite clients and ask them. Just get on the phone with your family. Get on the phone so with family. easy, you guys. When you follow what you say, you just ask your clients and ask potential clients. You just talk to them and then build. That's one of the things I've said that I love how Natalie built her thing. And like what you're saying is, I've always said like the way to create your seminars, workshops, books is to first coach one-to-one -one because when you coach one-to-one, -one, you get intimate with them, what their challenges are, what they want. Yeah. And through coaching them, you get better at delivering the breakthroughs. And then the other thing that happens is let's suppose you do 10 one-on-one, -on -one, one hour consultations, 10 different people. You're going to discover what two or three challenges keep coming up over and over and what two or three goals people want coming up over and over. And if enough people say, I have this problem, uh, then you could build a solution to that problem. And it's reasonable that the market will want it because those people already wanted it. So it's reasonable to think yeah. more people will. So the way you build out great marketing and great programs is by working with people. And so, duh, the way I'm going to build out this marketing for me is I'm just going to start talking to more people. Yeah, thank you. It also comes out of, too, like that, that, that avatar. A lot of people don't know what that means. It's just coming up with who would be your perfect client and then building yeah. marketing to them. And then if you have a client you really like or clients, asking them, like, hey, what's great? Well, thank you. That's that. That's the solution huh. I needed because I'll just That's talk the to solution. You. Okay. Thank you. We'll just talk until we get it out. Yeah. yeah. And you know, with, with everybody at there, they're like, I, how do I know that I have my ideal clients? And this is where I really tap into the feeling. I'm like, well, how do you feel after you've worked with a client? Do you feel tired? Do you need a nap? Do you need food? Do you need to put something in your mouth? Or do you feel uplifted and energetic and like, oh my gosh, I feel like I can take on the world or, oh my gosh, they had a huge breakthrough and that felt so amazing. I want to do this forever. I would have done it for free. So the latter is, those are your ideal clients. If you, if you would show up and do this with them for free and you're getting paid, I'm not saying do it for free, but if that's how you feel, yeah. that's an ideal client who could not use more of that in their life. I could use more of that, right? That Damn. happiness, that joyfulness. Yeah. Like that. Definitely. We, I, I love her. I love what she's doing. I love where she's coming from. I love what she's bringing. And yeah. then, so I just had that call. We were supposed to be an hour. We did like an hour and a half. Diane's like, that was a long call. And I was like, man, we've been great. And, it, and afterwards, excited because her presentation is coming together and it's really good. And her yeah. story is coming together. And I think 
side note, one of my favorite things about stories, when the breakthrough that got you where you are is the breakthrough you offer people, that's the easiest sell. Like that's so great. So some people are selling stuff. You're always selling something related to your breakthrough because it's how you view life. But when it's perfectly linear, it's just so nice, you know? I always feel uplifted and excited after we talk to you. So this has been super <laughs> awesome. So as we're, as we're gonna wrap it up, um, is there anything else you wanted to add or say? Anything else you could, but now, I, I, now Danielle, I do. I, I, I feel like more uplifted every time we talk. It's just fantastic. So oh, I'm super excited you. to have you on this call today and I'm so excited to go to your event. So, Let's give people the link again. If you could please yeah. send me the newer link you made in the all lowercase with all the hyphens. And then um, yeah. final comments. So any comments from you or any, Tina, do just read out the last one. <laughs> she says, maybe ask them what, what is one thing you struggle with as a speaker? That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, because everybody struggles with something in, yeah. in any kind of industry. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the things that um, I've seen people do, but now it's clicking while they do it, they have these online surveys people can fill out before they get a chance to talk. And now I'm getting yeah. it. I thought it was just a tactic, but I'm getting the logic behind it. Cool. Anything you want to share before so, we click off? No. Are your feet warm enough? They are warm enough. I will be posting pictures of socks. With oh, we have to get the later. socks. You guys got to talk. Are you going to go get the, the are you going to go get the socks? Okay. We're going to, no, can we do picking. that? I'm can picking. I get to see? He's, he's going to go get you socks. Powerful. See this. I get a vote, really right? Good. Yes, you get a vote. <laughs> the only reason okay. it's not cold is because he's sitting with a heat pack on his lap the whole time. Uh, All right, I will wear it myself. Do you want to show them the shorts? Oh, let's see. So, so I think these are my live shorts. I wear these every time I have a live because normally <laughs> from dust up. So here's, here's my Can shorts. We see you? A little dark. Because normally I only see me here. Up. And, and here's my current walking progress. Here we go. I have to like get myself built. I guess sorry, I'm afraid my knees gonna go. Okay. Got it. Look at that. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I still see. He's his first steps. So you guys, Danielle, give some more amazing tips. Buy, buy me like three minutes. You buy three minutes. So amazing tips. So amazing. I think that, Talk about amazing. your events again. To get the links and register. Oh, yeah. I sent the link. So it's all lowercase this time. Oh, awesome. So more amazing tips. See, you know, I think. I'm in yours. Did I send it? Yes, you did. Let me get that up there for everyone. So I think if I'm going to give you guys my one of my favorite little tips with the online space and you're trying to get people on the phone, there are so many ways that you can entice them to get on the phone with you. And for LinkedIn, you can actually put the app on your phone. So on your phone, there's a LinkedIn app. And when you download it on your phone, it gives you the microphone icon so you can record a message. And if you can give yourself a break from texting or typing and put your voice on a message, then it, it does something psychologically with people where they feel more connected or they feel more open to connecting with you further on a phone call if they hear your voice. So that's one of my favorite tips to give everybody is to give your fingers a break with the texting and the typing and use your voice and you can do it on their message with a voice. Yep. Leave them a message. Leave them a message on LinkedIn. Leave them a message on Facebook. I use it all the, Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, what a great way to use the opportunity to say their name so that you yep. know that you're not talking to a robot. You know, I've yep. run into several of those things where you think maybe you're talking to a human and yep. you realize halfway through the conversation you're talking to nobody at all, that it's just this digital process. So, yep. it's, yeah. I like it, that. Ups, yeah. it ups the trust factor in such a huge way. So get the apps like Facebook. I mean, I, I don't know if the Twitter or not Twitter. I don't know if Instagram has it now. Um, I have to check that, but I, I spend most of my time on LinkedIn and Facebook, but that little microphone has been not only keeping me from having to text. I don't like text. Really? Um, 
it's also been a huge, it's been a huge communication tool. So that people, they hear my voice like, oh, she sounds, you know, she sounds pleasant. I could get on the phone with her. I don't know if that's what they're thinking, but I tend to get more phone calls that way. With yeah. People. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really simple. And it takes like no time at all. And you're not, the thing I love about it is that I don't overthink when I'm writing because I'm just talking and I'm just talking to them like they're a regular person. Oh, that's awesome. Right. That's yep. an amazing tip. Yep. Did you give out the link again? Yes, we did. Did you post it in there? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. This yeah. has been so awesome. Did you have another one or should I do the socks? That's, I think that's a good, do the socks. That's, that's my favorite one. If you guys do anything, give your fingers a break today and go and voice message everybody. Okay. So ready? Um, so yeah. I'll let you pick the top four and then we'll okay. like have Tina pick and then maybe we'll do it for voting or you guys will just choose. So, so first round okay. is just normal little like ankle socks. <laughs> you don't get a vote. I vote no. You don't, can you have her not look? You I don't, don't like ankle socks. They like suffocate your ankles. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> that's number one. Number one. It's like an ankle choker. Let's put it here so people can see them. <laughs> no, so, two, ankle choker sock. <laughs> number two would be some Cabela's uh, nice warm all-weather socks that you could go hiking in, too. Mm -hmm. this is a, these, where's the, I do these, like Cabela's. <laughs> they're, they're somewhere. Cabela's. Well, I want to show people how oh, it would look yeah. with your sandal so they can get the full... <laughs> Like you want to tuck Here. that in. There we go. The full to the toe. There. That would there. be. Yeah. That, that, would, that would look really good. That says Midwest tourist right there. That is hot. Midwest tourist. You know, the great thing about these shoes though is you can wear black socks underneath them, and people think it's part of the shoe. Oh. Do you got black long. socks? Really big and fuzzy purple socks. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, okay, that's my vote right there. That's that's nice. That's nice. I like that. Pur purple oh, and fluffy. Oh. Yeah. Purple that's and my green vote. is my favorite combination so, too. Those so those are my favorite that. colors. Purple, 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 purple. <laughs> purple and green are my favorite colors. Yep. Mm -hmm. We got more to see though. Um, I've already decided. I like the purple ones. Yeah. You haven't seen these though. What I know, it. oh, those are, those are cute too. All right, those are second place. Look, 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 at how, look at how that goes together. <laughs> That's something, right? That's. Well, I, I think the green matches the lettuce and the hamburger, so it. <laughs> Do you hear what she said? It matches a little bit. No, say that again. I said that's like a kindergarten teacher combo. If your kindergarten teacher, Diane said it, not me. <laughs> the comments and views expressed by Diane. My daughter's kindergarten teacher would probably wear that. <laughs> and then we I have think that would be the greatest thing about being a kindergarten teacher, right? Well, yeah. You get to a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> oh, but the I look really show. uncomfortable. I would totally you... dress like Miss Frizzle. Yeah. yeah well, the. Is that, do you have like a second toe that's longer than your big toe? Because that would be really uncomfortable. Mm, no. You don't, okay. So that's I don't hard. have a long second toe, but my daughter I mean, does. does. I do too, so I can't I wear those socks. Big toe. Okay, now that was a, not a joke, but your point, but that's a good example of knowing your avatar. Like, yeah. you know the pain of that, and so you brought the, yeah. I didn't even know that was, I didn't even know to look at that. But if somebody yeah. was, a solution for people like literally if someone's building socks they could build the second toe longer sock and they're gonna hit yep. hit a niche probably no one else is hitting this is true i would buy those i can't buy those ones i'm like no that's gonna be so uncomfortable you just right. cut the the top of the second toe off <laughs> <laughs> well it, it cut you're gonna laugh at this but it does it automatically because because of that when i try that it automatically pushes that part of the sock out oh, so sock out. it gets worn yeah out. so then i had, and then it's i hate cool. i hate having like one toe that's not covered <laughs> so it drives <laughs> me crazy so what we should sell is toe caps, toe for caps. Your second a toe. little cap for your second toe do you have yes. a longer second toe are you tired of 
It just writes itself. <laughs> I mean, kind of one toe freezing. You're always catching yes. my one toe now. Ah, you see the commercial. The ah. See, I see. I do it on my pantyhose. It's always like whatever I wear pants. I hate wearing pantyhose because my second toe always. It does every time. And then, and then like my professional socks. I mean, it's not that. I mean, I'm talking like this. Everyone's like, well, how long is your second toe? Is it like that much longer? And it's not. But it's enough to be annoying, yes. <laughs> if anyone, if anyone is stuck toe. around this long, you, you deserve to see this. This is, this is here. Okay, this one oh. is our final one. But this one has snails on it. It's snails. Oh, okay. This I The purple one? Definitely flashes. Oh, wow. Yeah, well... Okay, so the purple ones, the hamburger ones, those ones, and then the toe ones. Yeah, the toe ones are out, I think. You think they're out? Well, but you don't see the toes. I think the joy of them is the toes. Although the colors are so fun. Which is the other one? Was there another one? Well, we had the Cabela's, but that's almost too nice to go with this. She doesn't like the ankle ones, so. The ankle ones are out. Yeah. <laughs> That's so those are the ones. Online. Who's online? If you're online, give us a vote. If anyone's still here with us. Yeah. I still like the purple ones. I like the purple ones. Uh, purple's oh. my vote. Let's do purple. Purple? <laughs> purple it is. All right. Purple it is. Purple. <laughs> These look amazing. Look, they're crocheted or knitted on the outside, but they are like fuzz on the inside. This is going to be phenomenal. I'm very excited about this. I know you must be disappointed. You want I'm me to so uh, disappointed. To uh, be in pain with the choice made, but here I'm even gonna go over the pants. Oh look, your pants are purple and matches. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Oh, Tina's got some good comments. She's <laughs> like, I can't, I can't not with you. Never again going out with you, Danielle. <laughs> what? Tina just says she's never going out with me again. I must be. I must have made her laugh so hard. <laughs> are you Are you able to see the chat now? I saw, yeah, I just saw it. I just saw it. I'm mine. I went on oh. mine. That's funny. That, is so funny. that could be an old comment, too. Okay, if she votes purple socks, I vote Mickey D socks. So yeah, Tina's but, votes for the Mickey D socks. So, so we, we got them. Let's see how this we looks. We got them modeled. Let's... Here, wait. I'll stand on the chair. You do one of each. You do one of each. Oh, that's true. These are pretty comfy socks, though. What do you think? <laughs> that's great. I think like you're going skiing almost. <laughs> I like the purple ones. It's it funny. matches. <laughs> it's nice. They're like they're like almost big enough to be little leg warmers. <laughs> leg warmer fad that's been going around the last couple of years. Oh yeah. 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 I wanted to be socks she didn't like. <laughs> well, women, women. No, they work together, Jay. Sorry. You really do like these, don't you? You're very proud of like these. You might not be getting these back. <laughs> well, tune in they next really week good. and we'll be sharing. <laughs> <laughs> what underwear should Jay wear? We won't be show and tell about it. We won't be doing that. We won't be doing that. <laughs> no. Right. But we really should talk about this, this toe sock thing. I think there may be a market there. We well, just sell little caps, little caps. Like, 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 yeah, little... I think that could be like the next big thing for it socks. Is. I'm just gonna ask people on LinkedIn: um, Is your fucking <laughs> toe bigger? <laughs> It'll be what's the age? So, hey, uh, for real, before I forget this, I did want to comment on LinkedIn. You were talking about positioning, so I've been yeah. doing a lot of reach outs, and I, someone messaged me last night, and they said they watch my videos and they're really impressed and i'm like yeah. where do you see my videos they must have just googled me because if you google me tons of videos pop yeah. up and i was yeah. like okay, that's cool and so i went in i just found out also with linkedin for all of your employments you could upload a picture that represents that employment i didn't yes. know you could do that so now on my profile that's like what i do with a photo of either me or the company or the logo so like yes. with current business profitable presentations I have a picture of our last event with the group of people together in the theater we rented. So yep. uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah. right, well, wait, we got to tune off. It's almost two hours. I do want to share this lesson with you and other people talking about. So 
I did a two hour one last week. We were doing show and tell and I had no idea we'd go that long. I didn't think we'd go this long today either, right? <laughs> it's been interesting. I've had a few people since last week say, oh, I'm in the middle of watching it or I'm still watching it. It's like they're watching it like a TV show. So you guys, thank you for those lovely comments that said that. That means the world to me. I, my, my goal for this is to, to give you information that impacts your business so that you make more money, so that you make a difference. Also to entertain you and get you to laugh and have some fun in your day. And then to do lead harvesting, to let people know we know our stuff and spin them up into becoming clients. Or if they're clients already, make them more effective and get out there. Or if they don't know us yet, to see this and go, oh, wow, these are people I want to know more. So, Danielle, thanks for being a part of that journey and really helping. Is there any stuff you want to say to send us out? What do you want to say? I just, I thought this is great. I didn't expect this. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're going to jump on real quick. So thank you for hosting, you guys. Being a host is like one of the best things that I love doing. And I love when I get to connect with other awesome hosts and hold that space with you. So thank you guys for that. And thanks everybody for watching all the way through. So, yeah, right. Yeah. Even if you got to do yeah. fits and starts. Anything from you? <laughs> uh, my feet are so much more comfortable now. So thank you all. <laughs> Tina, uh, you got the award for most comments today. Thank Absolutely. you, Tina. I look forward to Absolutely. meeting you at Danielle's event out there. And um, uh, one thing I keep forgetting to say is that I want to just end all my videos with uh, whatever you guys out there believe in, whatever your orientation, religion, I don't care. God loves you. He has great things in store for you. And if there's anything I've ever done that's benefited you, it's because God pulled me out of a dark pit and I want to just be his salt and light in the world. I want to help heal the world, heal people, make the world go down a little bit easier and be light, dark places. So that's our mission. And that's what we want to help you bring to the world as well. To go out and make a difference in people's lives. So thank you guys. We'll see you every Tuesday at 11 Pacific, 2 Eastern, 12 Mountain, 1 Central. Anything else? And Daniel, one more time, your link. What's the, or just find the link in the comments to go to the event. <laughs> What's the date of the event? October 18th and 19th, General Mission. Get the upgrades so you can have the third day, October 20th, with us. Awesome. Awesome. Love you guys. We'll see you again. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Oh, wait. Daniel, are you still there? Yeah. I wanted to get a picture of us on here. Hold on. We got to do okay. this. Oh. So, ooh, I almost clicked leave meeting. Thing I did. So here's what I do is, is I want to take a picture of my computer. So do me a okay. favor, um, wave, and when we're all waving on the reel and the replay, I'll, I'll cover up. Screen. I'll cover Starbucks up now. <laughs> yeah, cool Starbucks. I'm not a big fan of Starbucks. Waving, we're waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. Wow, that's a really long delay. This is how long the delay is. Okay, now we're waving. Now we're waving. All right, bye guys. Love you guys. Okay. Thanks, Danielle. Bye.